So this morning I witnessed a crime, actually. My alarm went off at seven as it usually does, and I was about halfway out of bed when I heard a woman scream. And so I went into the living room to look through the blinds at where the scream had come from, and you had a woman and a guy who were both screaming at each other something about a lawsuit. Uh, I returned and got changed, and then by the time I went back into the living room uh, to get an update on the situation, the man by that point had his uh, his hands around the throat of this woman and was pinning her up against a car, and she was still screaming at him. So I ended up calling the police, and I informed the police that there were three, by this point, three black men and uh, one white or tanned woman, and that there was this domestic dispute going on and all of that. And several minutes later, as is usual, uh, police arrived. By that point, the main attacker had driven away. Now, I bring all of this up because what I also did after this incident had been sort of semi-resolved is I used the uh, Neighbours app, which is pretty popular nowadays and which my local police department is plugged into. It's supposed to notify people of threats in the community and other just things that people ought to be aware of that have happened uh, recently. And so I you know, did a, a quick report there explaining what had happened, that there had been uh, three black men, but one primary aggressor and he had dreads and that this, this domestic dispute had happened with, as I put it at the time, as with a woman. And that he'd pinned her against the, the car and all of that. And after putting this report down, I submitted it, it was rejected. I got an email from the people who make the program. Again, it's called the, the Neighbours app, and it's run by the same people who make the ring doorbells. Um, yeah, those people. And they told me that my post had been rejected, and then they implied that, in, that my post had been rejected because of racism. Which, I'm just going to go ahead and, and go over this email with you that I got from them as to why they were unwilling to notify my neighbours of the threat in the neighbourhood and of the incident in the neighbourhood because of the racial dynamics of what had actually occurred. Um, so yeah, let's just, go, let's just go through it. It says, your post was reviewed by a member of our team and it was not approved because the way it was phrased or presented could alienate some of your neighbours. Now again, I mentioned that they were black men and that the primary attacker was a black man who had dreads because those were his characteristics, not because I was implying that his being black necessitated him putting the arms around the throat of some woman. Obviously. Continuing though, it says, calling attention to a personal attribute like someone's race, nationality, religion, social or economic position, sexual orientation or immigration status is rarely appropriate and often leads to misunderstandings. Um, well, I, I'm not sure how I'd know half of those things by looking at a person, but calling attention to someone's race is necessary when you're describing the fact that someone is around who might be dangerous, and it's one of the very few characteristics that's very easy to see from a distance as you're looking out of a window, out of a blind, right? That and the person's sex are pretty much about what you get, generally speaking. But what it, it goes on, right? And in the, the next half of the next paragraph, it says, this information does not help meaningfully identify someone. And, in, and can imply that race and gender are part of the reason to be concerned about a person's actions. Now, let's just slow down a bit. Um, that information doesn't help meaningfully identify someone? Well, it's not an entire picture, it's not a photograph, for sure, but it is, I mean, these are defining characteristics that we notice at a, at a glance. These are things that you would mention first before anything else, before you mention any other characteristic that you might see on a person before you uh, even identify their height, most likely, you're gonna you're gonna spot their their sex and their race. This isn't something that's controversial. It doesn't make you racist. It means that you have eyes. That is all. But then it goes on and says that if we're gonna mention the race, if you're going to include an individual's race, you must include two additional physical descriptors, such as clothing, tattoos, or mode of transportation. Height, age, and sex are not sufficient because these physical attributes are too commonplace to be meaningful. Now, hold on, okay? Um, I didn't get close enough to ask this guy if his tattoos happened to have any gang affiliations or not. I didn't, you know, inquire about exactly how they appeared near my apartment. Uh, 
I didn't consider those things to be especially important. And as far as what clothing he was wearing, I don't know, because I was looking at him from a sideways glance while he had his hands around someone's throat. Again, this wasn't a full picture of a, of a description of an individual. This was a limited amount of information that is supposed to provide people with a, a glance at what happened so they can be aware that a violent incident took place in the area. And maybe, as sometimes happens and is, I think, the purpose of the, of the app, if we're going to use the term, other people have cameras nowadays in front of their houses and some of them might have actually captured some of the video of that incident. But no, none of this can happen because, apparently, racism or something. And this is the real problem here, is that modern political correctness endangers individuals and communities because that's easier, ultimately. It's easier for these different corporations to say, well, you know, Yes, we were designed as a, as a safety program to, to help make communities safer, but let's just kind of like throw that to the side because this makes, I don't know, presumably black people look bad. That's the angle. Doesn't it make us look better? And isn't it intrinsically more fair if we simply describe what has happened as it happens to people? I mean, what is the implication there? That if a person is a certain race, you can't mention it, because it therefore impugns the entire race of people. I'm not saying that, but that's certainly what Neighbours, uh, you know, run by Ring, is implying. And why? And yes, I have seen the fact that in multiple instances nowadays, they are leaving the race off of descriptors when there is a suspect that's been that's on, on, on the loose. It doesn't make sense from any rational or reasonable uh, state of mind, and rather it endangers people unnecessarily in order to appease. It's disgusting and gross and it's the way that it's going. And honestly, I don't think that had they had I mentioned the attackers being white, had they been such, I don't think that would have been a problem. I didn't mention the race of the woman, she was white, um, but that's because she was the victim of the attack and therefore the way that she looked is completely irrelevant. I mean, and we're emerging in a certain time where we we no longer are supposed to practice some degree of what race blindness to an individual with whom we have an impact. We're instead supposed to act as if certain races must be protected and others are only the perpetrators of violence in contradiction to established fact and statistics. I, I mention all of this because it has real world implications. We're starting to get these these alerts about different people who happen to be on the on the loose, and it's supposed to make communities safer, but it doesn't when we prioritize political correctness above everything else, and that's the way that we're going.